and telling people that it is okay for you to be Muslim and for you to be gay. Shame, 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 shame. shame. couple in love, every mother and father, every saint and sinner in the history of our species. Matt Hogston is still struggling with the loss of the man he was due to marry. Dr. Naz Mahmood took his own life in July, days after telling his family he was gay. He loved his family so much that he never wanted to let them down. And in that moment, when he was forced to come out in front of the whole family in floods of tears, all he wanted was the unconditional love from his parents. But he was given the complete opposite and treated like he was a disease. He was told to see a psychiatrist to be cured of being gay because they'd heard it on radio programs. We have to do something to try and stop this from happening ever again. Why are you making this film?
What I really want to answer is the burning question is that if there are more positive role models from a similar background to theirs, would that have made a difference to his family? And would Naz still be alive today if they had reacted differently on the day that they forced him to come out? And that's really what I have to find out. I am learning that the desire is not dirty that I need not pray myself clean, that shame need not shove me to my knees, forehead to zameen to bring me closer to my deen. My dua is love. My dua is love, it pours pure, like zamzam through my body, through her body, through my body, through her body. We are holy. We are holy in liquid sighs and sweat-soaked skin. I cannot tell where she ends and I begin as love interweaves through estuaries of limb in this tapestry of brown. It is not a sin. It is not a sin, instead a call to prayer. It is a call to prayer whenever my name leaves her lips with devotion, I know that God is here. Whenever I am with her, I know that God is here. Love means that you trust someone whenever you think that person, you feel happy, you feel relaxed smiles come on your face that oh my god that people that person is amazing he love you he like you when, whenever he touch you your smile your face is come like this smiling face your eyes look, go going to close that oh your beloved person just touch you i believe that that is love my name is imran yak and i was born in pakistan in london i have nice life but if I go back in my Pakistan life, like just my crying and just tensions, headache and just horrible because Pakistan is the worst country for gay people, for homosexual. So I want to spend my life just only with one person and I know he is with me. He is honest, he is loyal. I don't want to do any my past, what happened to me. That's why I just close myself. I want to spend my life with that guy. That's it. He will come. I will cook food. We have nice dinner. Go outside. Go clubs. Enjoy the dancing, watching the movies. So this is the life. After 5-10 minutes, then everything will be turned out. Nice smell. Nice color. And then we can eat. I mean, if God, if I got money, then I can <laughs> make my own restaurant. <laughs> so, how would other people perhaps describe you? Some people think I'm very good, I'm very nice, but some people say, "Oh, you are sexy. Your hip is good. Your ass is nice, but you are getting old." like these comments but when I went club then people like my dance someone like too much then they want to spend time with me I mean I don't mind that I'm getting old day by day but I'm happy in my life my ginger curry it's almost done important thing in your life. Love and one nice sexy partner, that's it. In Pakistan, like people think that I am Gandu, I am bitch, I am evil. They said, oh, if we kill him, then that maybe God rewarded him as well. But that is not correct things. They are nasty people. Anyway. 
What would happen if you went back to Pakistan? Mm. Straight away they will kill me like, not like human, like, how can I describe what they think about me? Like we don't have any like price, life price. They they wanna kill and then after they said, oh God will rewarded him because we killed this Kandu. My name is Kalim and I was born in 1983 and uh, I'm from Pakistan and uh, been living here um, since 2015 as a open gay. I like to um, explore, I like to live my life openly and uh, that's my that's what my dream is. Yeah, I'm Muslim and I follow my religion since I was born and um, I want to continue that. Uh, the consequences in Pakistan, if you being found to be in a relationship with, uh, with, with the same sex person, so you would be, your life would be at risk and you would be killed. This is a birthday party of one of my friends. I done a little bit um, drag. Wow, I'm looking like a princess, like <laughs> like a, like a bird. Would you say that food is the way to somebody's heart? Yep, absolutely. Why do you think that? Yeah, if you cook someone, he will eat food, then he will enjoy, then he will think, oh my god, he cooked for me nice food, then he will fall. Not suddenly, but slowly, slowly. Love is the most important thing in your life. Even I don't want to remember that things. I love my life. I want to spend my life happily in this country, freely and happily. I don't want to lose my life and I don't want to die. My name is Sadia, I live in London. I'm an Italian Bengali gay woman. I was born and raised in Italy, in Rome, and both my parents are Bengali. So both my parents are Muslim and quite religious. Um, they were quite liberal in Rome, and in London they gained a more of a, like a stricter or more religious uh, attitude. Um, I'm quite close with my mom. Uh, I see her almost every week, uh, and I'm out to her. So. <laughs> Today I'm at Barbarette having my hair cut. I come here almost every three weeks. Short hair problems. <laughs> um, and this is Buck. Um, I really like it here because I can really be myself. And this is where I first had my uh, hair cut short. Uh, and before I used to live in, uh, with my parents. Uh, that's where I always had my hair long, so I never had it short. And it was like truly liberating to uh, come here and get my hair done, like at a queer friendly place. She looked at So I realized I was gay when I was about uh, 12. Um, first I came out as bi and that's what I thought I was. And then I realized I was gay. Um, so at first I told my close friends and my sister, who actually in Rome, and they took it very well. So I was quite happy. Uh, but I knew that I couldn't come out to my parents because they're Muslim 
and I was living with them. So I thought I would be disowned. Um, so I never came out to them at that point. Um, so that was really hard for me. Then uh, some years passed um, and my plan was to always move out, uh, become independent, so not be living with my parents. Um, so then, so that I could become independent and then come out to my mom. So did you normally have the same haircut or different each time? Uh, slightly, no. slightly changes yeah. a little bit every time, doesn't it? So. Always a uh, bit similar, but different. Yeah. yeah. Same dog, different leg. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of that saying. Have you never heard that before? No. Is that a British yeah. thing? It's an Australian thing, I think. So yeah. Was it, what did you say? Same dog, different leg. What yeah. does that even mean? So my goal was to come out to my mom um, before I came back to London. So one day I, I picked up the phone in Paris in my flat. Uh, it wasn't planned, it just happened. And I called her and I told her that I was gay. Um, at first she uh, was crying or I was crying as well. Um, she was Surprisingly, she took it better than I expected, um, which was a surprise for me. She actually thought uh, that it was sad. She was sad for me that I had to go through so much pain all those years uh, whilst hiding my sexuality. Um, so then the first couple of months she was um, in denial. Um, and right now, it's been uh, an year, one year f since I came out to my mom uh, and we still have a good relationship. Although we don't talk about my love life, but I understand she needs time and um, like much more time to process uh, like this new knowledge. My name is Shamal Warich. Um, I'm a British, South Asian, Muslim, gay man. Uh, originally from Manchester, but now I live here in East London. Um, I chose to come out to my mum first. Uh, I came out to her in around about my mid twenties, uh, and then I came out to my father a year later. Um, I did it separately because I think I just wanted to process my mum's reaction first, and then my father's. Um, my mum was hugely supportive. It was quite um, anticlimactic in a way because she was, she just wanted me to be happy and she wanted me to know that she was there for me regardless to um, who I was or my what my sexual identity was. In fact, actually I remember she was more horrified when I, she spotted tattoos on my body than when I came out as a gay man. Um, so yeah, she was very supportive. I don't think she quite understood what it meant in the grand scheme of things. Um, she still battles with the idea as to whether it's a lifestyle choice or whether it's something I'm born with. But she's getting there and we're getting there. Um, but I was just kind of blown away by her reaction of being so positive um, towards me being gay. My name is Amir Dean. I'm 30 years old. I identify as a gay man of South Asian descent and I live in West Yorkshire. Hi, and I'm his husband. Hello. Hey. Hello. And I just remember he was just sat there and he was like, you know, this um, ring finger. And he was like, I'm ready to be, you know, engaged, you know, by the way, just to let you know. And I was like, it's meant to be a surprise. But with him, it's always an organized surprise. And what was it like growing up for us? I think yours was very interesting. In yeah, so I come from a, an Orthodox uh, Muslim family. Um, I was raised uh, as, a, as a Muslim and um, 
we had quite conservative values growing up. Um, you know, the sort of praying five times a day, eating halal only, no alcohol, no sex before marriage, and certainly, you know, no homosexuality. That was <laughs> the code. That was the code of conduct. I mean, you know, it was really orthodox. When I um, came out to my mum, the feeling before coming out was, you know, nervousness, fear, scared, all all the emotions. And when I came out to her, it, it was quite an amazing moment because she did accept me. She gave me a hug and she said, it's going to be OK. And I felt amazing in that moment. And then when, um, you know, my stepdad found out, that's when it quite, so it went a bit darker because he was like, you can't see so-and-so, you know, to my mum, you can't see him. And I was really scared that I wouldn't be able to see my siblings anymore. Um, and just fear, really. Advice I would give to a young person or someone that's coming from the same background as um, I have, you are the most important person in your life. Not anyone else, you are first. So find your tribe, make your plan, and go and find your happiness, because it's out there for you to get. Uh, I am Farhan Khan and I come from Glasgow but now I live in London and I identify as a queer Muslim and I'm of mixed Afghan and Punjabi heritage. So my childhood was um, quite, actually quite idyllic. Uh, I grew up in a suburb of Glasgow and you know um, my mum and dad uh, kind of always wanted to have a boy. So um, yeah, there I come along after a couple of sisters and I was showered in love. So growing up, uh, even at primary school, I started to realise that I was probably a little bit different to other kids. Um, like at primary school, I was into The Little Mermaid and lots of really, um, I don't know, like, I guess, girly things. Other kids at school, especially the boys, were a bit perturbed as to why I would be into all these things. But at the same time, I was into mut uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all that stuff as well. It's only, you know, when I got to the later stages of primary school and people started to use the word gay as a negative. Um, at the time, I didn't know what gay meant, but I knew I didn't want to be gay. I did the typical Asian thing and bought a bloody BMW, didn't I? That was, but I, I suppose, um, for Asians, it's a little bit of a kind of like, a little bit of a dream, like, you know, whether you like it or not, you, you, you know, you do get a lot of kudos if you've got a nice car as an Asian. Shouldn't, ne shouldn't necessarily be that way, but I don't know. I think that it's extremely important for LGBTQ people to be visible in the media because for so long, we've had to stay hidden. You know, it was only 50 years ago, roughly, that, um, you know, homosexuality was partially uh, dis decriminalized. And when I was at school, it was illegal for the teachers to even discuss homosexuality because it was deemed uh, to be pretending uh, a pretended familial norm. So I started getting into mechanics simply by being Scottish and being really cheap and not wanting to pay a, a garage to do work on my car when I thought maybe I could just do it myself. Oh, oh. I just happened to be a dab hand with a motor car. Oh. Oh. Well, he, oh, here we have my pollen filter. Oh. Oh. That's my pollen filter. I think I might have broken it. Yeah, I have. I've broken it. My name's Saima. I'm from Birmingham, a proud Brummie born and bred, also a proud Pakistani Muslim woman, and surprise, surprise, I'm a lesbian. I grew up in a single parent family. My poor mum was a child bride. My poor father was a banker in Pakistan and through so-called positive migration found himself cutting foam in a factory in the UK, which destroyed his life. Um, I have one brother who's a little bit older than me and, my, and I had a lot of love for my mum's family growing up, a lot of love. So I've grown up in a Muslim family. I, I identify as a Muslim myself. Um, I'd say in, in my young teenage years, I had a lot of faith um, and as I got older, I started getting very angry with the patriarchy and the cultural values that the patriarchy throw and impose on our community. Um, and actually that made me 
kind of take a bit of a back step away from faith in my early 20s. However, as I got older, I realized that the patriarchy can be challenged too, um, and actually are part of the problem. A, a year and a half ago, I started my own business. Um, it's a socially con conscious business. I own a floating hotel in Birmingham city center. It's one of a kind, um, and I have a social mission of hopefully diversifying the canals by setting up a foundation. Hello and welcome to Botel Birmingham, Birmingham's only floating hotel. You are currently in the lounge. We are now coming into the kitchen, which has all the amenities of a good hotel, a cooker, a sink. I've lived on the water for eight years. Um, and it's very white, it's very middle class. And me, myself, coming from inner city, Birmingham, um, when I think about the kids I went to school with who have kids of their own, they're still not experiences, experiencing these things in our great city. Um, and I really want to create access for them to experience these experiences. What I love about being on the canal is the fact that we're all different, but we all put our differences aside and get on. Um, the fact that we are boaters, I've been on the water for eight years now, um, and we are vulnerable. We are more vulnerable than you are in our house. Um, but that's even more reason for unity and for us to stick together. And I think that's one of the most wonderful things about living on the water is our differences and the way we put our differences aside and come together every day. I myself wouldn't have made it this far if it wasn't for my boat family. So, you know, I have my blood family, but I also have my water family, which is just wonderful. So, you know, for me as well, when there's people walking past and especially if they're people of color, I will make an extra effort. I'll stop my boat you know, a wave, and that's why I play South Asian music as well, because um, that attracts people, you know, they recognize the music. Um, and then, you know, you see people like I'm seeing now, wave at them, you know, and for me, it's about getting my communities onto the water. Um, so you guys can do this as well yourself, you know. Um, and just by having that visibility of, for young people especially, you know, having that visibility, um, of positive role models, regardless of anything else to do with your life, you know, but positive role models um, is really important. I mean, it's one of the reasons I, I do this. No, it was meant to be me first. Oh, okay, sorry. My name is Sayyidah Sarat Fatima. I'm Muslim Pakistani lesbian. And this is my community. This is my community. This is my community. This is my community. And knock knock, I'm the person I was born to be. Why did they see astronauts send a rose to the moon? Because he loved Gulab Jamun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, my best joke. <laughs> right. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> this one's terrible. In my last relationship, I hated being treated like a piece of meat. He was vegan and never touched me. <laughs> Is that really bad?